Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about what idempotent means in the context of programming and a few examples of that, as well as um, some ways to think about incorporating this into programming and why it is a useful concept. Uh, but let's jump into it. So first, we're going to start with the dictionary definition, which actually isn't that useful for programming, uh, but you can kind of see where it gets its origins and ties from. So idempotent is uh, an adjective that says it is unchanged when multiplied by itself. In this case, it's referring to usually unit vectors or uh, unit matrices or the number one itself. And we have this you know, rather useful second definition. Um, idempotent is an idempotent element, of course, obviously. Who would have thought anything else? Um, but anyway, that's, that's kind of the, the definition. But when you think about it in terms of programming, an idempotent operation is one which uh, performs some side effect, but if it is already at the end state, it does nothing. So it is a repeatable action that you know doesn't continue to have side effects if it's repeated. And let me give you probably the most common example, or at least the one that I see most often, and that is when creating directories, you're going to run... Uh, so normally if you create directories, you would run makedir and then a directory name. So if you do makedir a, that creates the directory. You can see we have a directory called a here. Uh, but if I were to run this again, you'll see that it errors the second time. So this is not an idempotent operation because I tried to perform the same side effect, and even though it already existed, it uh, you know produced an error. Now there is a way to do this in an idempotent fashion, as that and that is mctr dash p um, with a directory. Now dash p actually means a different thing, um, but it happens to operate in the same way. For this uh, dash p is short for dash parents, I believe. And this is because you can create multiple directories at the same time, and it will make sure that all of these exist. So you can see that we got, you know, A, B, C, D by doing make their parents A, B, C, D. And so this is, you know, again, a repeatable operation. I can run make their dash as parents A, B, C, D again, and it doesn't error in this case because they already exist. Now there is actually a, um, Equivalent, which I didn't, I didn't know this. This I actually learned this while teaching make dir dash p uh, to my brother, who was learning programming at the time. There's actually an rm dir dash p, which works similarly. Um, you can see that if I run rm dir dash p, uh, it removed that entire directory structure. And if we run it again, oh, actually rm dir dash p is not idempotent. Oh, huh, okay. Well, I misremember that. Um, but I don't know when I would ever use this because rmrf is idempotent so this is the idempotent way to recursively remove a directory tree um, you can see that if we do echo dollar question mark we get zero and in this case the f is what makes this idempotent uh, rm says you know if if it doesn't exist we'll just ignore the operation that would run um, in fact like if you have touch a rm dash f a is also an idempotent operation in fact touch a is, uh, well, touch A is mostly an idempotent uh, operation. You can think of it as being idempotent if you don't care about the modify time, uh, because touch is actually going to update the modified time of this of this uh, file. But if your goal is just to create a file, then touch is idempotent. Um, another situation where you might think about idempotency is when you're writing an API. Um, one common example of an idempotent operation is I want to make an update to something um, and you know, set it to a particular value. So, uh, say we were working in a database. I don't know, let's fire up SQLite. Create table users. I don't know username, age, and insert into users uh, values. Um, <laughs> great. <laughs> let's just not dox myself in here. Let's say there's a John who's 24. Um, and let's say that John, uh, this is a very terrible example of a table because you probably wouldn't store age. You would probably store birthday. That way you could actually just compute the age. Um, but this is a silly example. Um, so let's say that you had some sort of API that was, I don't know, update age. And this took a user and, and an age or something like that. You could write an idempotent operation Oh, that was not what I wanted. You can write an idempotent operation for this by using an update with a where clause. You could say um, update 
um, users set age equals some value, so let's say it's 25, uh, where uh, username equals John. And so this now changed, set star from users, this now changed John's age, and if we were to run this again, it is item potent, so it's, it's not going to error or, or change the value because it is already what we expect. So that might be another example, and you might incorporate this into your you know, RESTful APIs uh, where you do like a, a patch operation. Um, I think that's all I really wanted to talk about item potency. Oh, I guess I kind of want to talk about how it's use why it's useful. The reason that these operations are useful is you can run them repeatedly and ensure a steady state after you run these operations. So like maybe you're writing, you know, output files into a directory and you want to ensure the steady state that that directory exists before you do the write. So you might use make dir dash p. Um, item potency can also be useful if you're writing atomic operations and you may need to ensure some state in the middle, um, but you know, make it look as a, a single atomic operation outside. But anyway, that's item potency. Hopefully this was useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.